How the Grade 6-7 class at Bishop Pocock School Reduced Waste. Our class started with creating ecological footprints on how we have personal impacts on our environment. From there, we spent some further time learning about environmental sustainability and ways that we need to work on sustaining our environment for a positive future. Students then spent time looking at videos and doing some research, looking at articles to learn about the ways that humans impact the environment. Our class then held a garbage audit and this is what we found in the garbage of a school of 180 students. 10 pounds of edible unopened food, 5 pounds of metal, 1 pound of lost and found items, 2 pounds of actual garbage, 85 cents of recycling items, 48 Ziploc plastic baggies, 15 pounds of compost items, and 10 pounds of paper products. We also decided that Boston Pizza produced way too much waste in the hot lunch that they provided for our school. We collected all the items, cleaned out the boxes and the containers that the Caesar salad came in and recycled them. Our class then brainstormed ways in which we could do the same lunch but reducing the amount of waste. So we decided to buy a large pizza instead of the individual sized pizzas and not offer lasagna. We made our own Caesar salad and eliminated these plastic containers and we brought our own cutlery and dishes to our class to enjoy our pizza and Caesar salad hot lunch. After the garbage audit, students discussed the changes that we needed to make in our classroom. We realized that plastic bags should be banned in our city. They wanted to decrease the amount of plastic baggies in classroom lunches, create classroom bins for unwanted lunch items, inform other people about what can go into the blue recycling bins and how to prepare those items for recycling, and inform Boston Pizza about our concerns with their packaging for hot lunches. Another group also decided to focus on why we should be turning lights off around our school and homes when they are not being used. The focus of our group was to look into why plastic bags are bad for the environment. We have been encouraging students, staff, and our families to use material bags instead of plastic bags, since they can be reused many times and they are very durable. Plus, they are way better for our environment. We learned that many plastic bags end up in our oceans and cause harm to the marine life. We also learned that plastic is made from polyethylene, which is a chemical that is bad for humans and animals. Two guest speakers from Plastic Smart Saskatoon visited our classroom. They told us that they had that they want to went to the city council to propose the task of banning plastic bags in Saskatoon. City council's response wa response was they can be recycled so there's no need to ban them. However, we learned that there are many cities around the world that have banned or taxed plastic bags. Plastic Smart Saskatoon informed us that their goal should be to prevent using plastic bags due to the harmful effects on our environment and the amount of natural resources they use up. Our class will be helping Plastic Smart Saskatoon in May to clean up our river bank. Last spring, they collected 50 pounds of garbage along the river bank. We are looking forward to helping out with this task in May. Our group focus was Ziploc lunch baggies. Throughout this unit, we learned that our world is being polluted by plastic. Not only are our landfills full, but also our parks, rivers, oceans, lakes, and forests. Millions of marine animals die annually from ingesting an entanglement of plastic. Plastic is made from chemicals and oils, which can make people sick. We have res researched all the possible ways to reduce and recycle plastic and alternatives for Ziploc bags. 
Our group also made a PowerPoint and movie to present to every class. We also sent home newsletters to try to persuade parents to use Tupperware rather than Ziploc bags. Every month we do a surprise garbage audit and the class will, uh, with the least waste gets prizes. Our school's waste has gone from 34.5 pounds to 13 pounds in about two months. We've also gotten rid of any recycling products in the garbage. We plan to do a plastic bag audit in April, and we're challenging each class to use no plastic bags. This was the results from our garbage audit in the first one. This is the picture from the first audit. We had 48 plastic baggies or Ziploc baggies, and the second one we had 38. So since we found there was not that much of a decrease, we have just, this group has decided to um, challenge the classrooms in April, and we're going to keep track on a big poster at the front of the school. Hi, I'm Anna Sophia. And I'm Dane. And we're from the Food Bank Group. The focus of our group was to decrease the amount of wasted food in our school system. You see, in January, we held a garbage audit, and we found 10 pounds of uneaten food. After we taught the kids in the school about the food bins, and after we did another garbage audit, the amount of wasted food was significantly decreased with Pre one pound. We learned that kids, a lot of kids die of starvation every day and that really hit a soft spot on us. We created the, boot, the food bins to put a stop to that. So here's one and it already has a banana in it. This would have been thrown out if we didn't have the food bins. We went around presenting our PowerPoint to each classroom and saved them from a food bin. Saved a food bin for them. So each class got one of these food bins yeah. and the group was successful in decreasing the amount of waste in our garbage since we went from 10 to 1 pound of edible food in our garbages. Our goal for our next garbage audit is to find absolutely no food at all in there. This right here is a bin, it's a larger bin for food. At the end of the day, our group goes around collecting waste, like unwanted food from the bins, and we put it in here. You can even eat, like, take a snack at the end of the day to eat if you're hungry. From our garbage audit, we realized that students need a reminder of what can be recycled at school. So our group focused on what goes into the blue bin. We created this trifold to help explain the items that go into the blue bin. We found out that the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, and 7 are on the bottom of like pop can, or plastic and pop cans, like this stuff. Paper, carbon needs to be flattened. Shred paper can go into plastic bags to be um, recycled. And clothing cannot go into garbage. Metal and tin, you give it a quick rinse before um, you put it into the blue bin. And, yeah. We presented our information to the students in our school and provided each class with a new blue recycling container for the products we weren't recycling in our school. Like this. This sheet also shows the items that can be put into this bin, just as a reminder for the students in each class. Mm -hmm. Each class already had a blue bin for cans, juice boxes, paper products, and milk, but our new addition helped making our recycling efforts even better. In our first garbage audit, we found 85 cents of recycling. In our audit, audit last week, we didn't find any recycling that could be turned in for money. Also, we were successful in our reminders. The recycling group also created this blue bin and used it to quiz the students in each class on items that can go into the recycling and how to prepare them. Hi, I'm Douglas. Hi, I'm Kristen. And our group was reducing Boston Pizza's waste along with two other members who were in a group. Our group took on the role of reducing Boston Pizza's waste. After one hot lunch, we collected all the waste and we had multiple pizzas, salads, and lasagna boxes.
This picture shows of two big salads instead of using individual salads. And this picture so shows one big pizza instead of using small individual pizzas. And this is a picture of our class with all of our reusable plates and cutlery. What we decided to do was we wrote persuasive letter and mailed it to the Boston Pizza head office in BC. We also went to a local Boston pizza and brought a poster showing alternatives they could use. I learned that even though all of Boston Pizza's packaging is biodegradable, it would take it would still take 1,000 years to biodegrade. So we were hoping Boston Pizza will reduce the waste and consider our concerns. I went to our parent council meeting and informed them our class is trying to reduce waste in our school. I asked them to purchase reusable dishes so we could ban styrofoam in our school. We are in the process of purchasing these dishes. Another group in our classroom educated the students and staff about why we should be turning lights off when they are not being used. They went to the school assembly and had a PowerPoint presentation explaining why we should be turning the lights off around our school when nobody is in the rooms using them. They also created these little stickers. It says turn lights off when not being used as a visual reminder and they put them above all of the light switches around our school. This display shows the effects of our garbage audit, the before and after. So we did the teachings to the classes in the month of February and did our garbage audit in March to see how we were doing. The paper products reduced from seven pounds to one pound. Metal and tin stayed at a half a pound each time. Lost and found items went from one pound to a half a pound. Plastic baggies, 30, or sorry, 48 in the first audit and 38 in the after one. Compost items went from 14 pounds down to 6 pounds. And the edible food, which was the greatest difference, went from 10 pounds to 1 pound. Actual garbage went from 2 pounds in our pre-audit up to 5 pounds in the post-audit, largely due to the fact there were some uneaten sandwiches in there, or sandwiches with bites taken out of in the after one. And another great change was the recycling. We had 85 cents in our pre-audit and absolutely no recycling items in our after audit. So overall we've had some really good success and we're hoping to see greater improvements in our next audit in April. Just for fun, here are some recycling art projects that my class did at the end of our environmental sustainability project. So basically we just brought, I asked the parents to donate any fabric, pop cans, lids, tabs, feathers, kind of any art supplies that were laying around their house. And the kids used their imaginations and created some very interesting art pieces. It's a little bag made out of fabric.